Hello, and welcome back to my Mantis channel. Uh, I am wearing the same shirt as probably the last video, and that is because I am filming on the same day. I mentioned that in the last video. Don't worry, I do change my clothes. It's just the same day. There's a plane. Wow, it couldn't have done this like two seconds ago. Hopefully you can't hear it. Today I decided to do care of my favorite species and my first species. I have talked about these guys a lot. I have shown my specimens on my channel a lot. In fact, I recently did an unboxing on these guys and I love them. They are my favorite by a long shot. And not just because they were my first species and I have a... Oh my God, the plane! Can you hear that? I don't even live near the airport. What is this? Are we done? Nope, still going. I'm trying to film. It's getting quieter. I'm going to continue filming. I love spiny flower mantises. There you go. There's a TLDR of everything I was just about to say. I conveniently have some very young nymphs and an adult to show you guys. I don't have an adult male because my males are taking an eternity to mature, but I have an adult female, which everyone's more interested in seeing the females anyway. So I thought I would show you guys. She was in my lap. I don't know if you can see this on the film, uh, the her container. Uh, she currently lives in one of my townhouses. My townhouses are perfect for spiny flower mantises. In fact, that's what I designed them for, was for spiny flower mantises. I'm currently going into a breeding project on trying to achieve a specific coloration of spinies. So I have a lot of these guys and I will have many more in the future. So I needed a convenient storage method to keep all my spinies and my townhouses are stackable. So let's get her out. This is Miss Ruby. I named her Ruby because when she was a nymph, she had some very pretty red coloring. Uh, she doesn't, she, oh, she's thirsty. Are you thirsty? Hold on, get all the way out and I'll give you some water. Hold on, get, just get, get, get out, get, get, put, okay. Just throw that on the ground. She is thirsty. Spay, spay, spay. I'm sorry. Oh, now you're not thirsty? Now you're just mad. Yeah, no, there we go. They will often drink water off of your hand if they're thirsty. I find that these guys really like to drink water off of your hand. Please don't, ow! Sometimes they eat skin. In fact, a friend of mine, uh, I'm calling you out, Maui. A friend of mine in Georgia has a mantis that I sent them and uh, just casually let that mantis eat some of their skin. I'm calling you out. You can try to defend yourself in my comments, Maui, but it's not, it's too late. It's too late. Everybody knows. She still just, it, it tickles, it really does tickle, and then sometimes she gets a good pinch in. But it's very cute. Look at her go. It's very cute. One of the reasons I love these guys is their little personalities. They are fearless. They will take on, maybe not quite as fearless as a panther mantis, who will hopefully be upcoming very soon. I have two sub-adult females, so. Um, but they will take on basically any prey you offer them. They. I have only gotten her to threat display a couple of times and it was immediately after she molted. So they're generally a little more sensitive right after a molt and they're more likely to threat display. But their personalities are just, they're just really, they're just really cute. They're just really cute. They don't seem to mind being held at all. Um, in fact, when I opened the container, she walked right out on me, no hesitation whatsoever. I have had her since she was an itty bitty baby. So about the age of these guys down here, in fact. They're a relatively small species, which is one reason that I really enjoy them, is that you don't have to worry so much about space requirements because they're so little and you can have 80 of them and it's not a big deal. One day I'll have to do a, a bug room tour and you'll be able to see how I keep them because they are stacked sky high. <laughs> they also do great in my duplex containers. So I designed the townhouses specifically for spiny flower mantises. Oh, there's no water on there. There's no water on the tip of my finger. Please no. There we go. She's very thirsty today. Um, but I originally kept them all in duplexes. I find duplexes are really great if you find out that you have a, a male and a female. That way you can keep your breeding pairs together. 
these guys are particularly aggressive towards their males. Uh, it's not always great. So you do need to be careful when breeding them. Care-wise, I find them generally pretty easy. My bug room, uh, bedroom, reptile room, whatever you want to call it, is generally pretty warm because I have so many heat lamps in there. So it's 75 degrees minimum uh, and it will get up to 80 during the day, which is perfect for spiny flower mantises. So I just keep them at room temperature. If they're in a room cooler than that, you will want to offer heat. You can either use a heat mat, which will keep them plenty warm. I usually put them along the side of the containers I'm gesturing, but it's totally off film, off screen. Film? Am I okay? Off screen, and I know it is, but I'm still doing it. Um, without actually touching the plastic, it's important to know that there are only one type, there's only one type of heat mat rated for plastics, and that is the ones designed specifically for hermit crabs. Those will work great. I have, I've used them for mantises for a long time, specifically because they are rated for plastics, but no other heat mat from any brand is rated for use on plastic. This is because it'll heat the plastic too much and it can release film, or film? Christ! It can release fumes. I got really hung up on film today. Um, am I having a stroke? It'll release fumes from, the, oh, I'm sorry. Did I startle you? I didn't mean to, I'm still thirsty. <laughs> She's just drinking away. Um, so you want to make sure that you either your heat mat is not touching your plastic container if you're using a larger one or you're using one specifically made for hermit crabs. They usually keep them in the hermit crab section at the pet stores. They're pretty easy to get. They're a little on the spendy side considering how small they are, but you can use them for multiple containers. You can stand them up in between two terrariums and heat two at the same time, which is usually what I do when I have to heat. I don't anymore because my room is so warm, but there you go. They do need a little bit of warmth. Spiny flower mantises really like a dry. They're not a desert species, but they are close to it. And high humidity, humidity can kill them. They, they're very sensitive to infections and mold growth. And so you want to keep them in a container that has good ventilation, which is why, I've, as you see, I've drilled on both sides of my townhouses. I also drill holes along the bottom of all of my containers for spiny flower mantises. I will be doing so in all my future townhouses, so any of the ones you buy in the future will have drill holes along the bottom. I've also done so on my bungalows here. I don't know if you can see the holes along the bottom. I do not use powdered substrate. I use moss in these containers. I use rocks and moss. And this is to, the, the rocks I use in the bottom are to prevent, I don't use them on the bungalows because they're not tall enough, but on the townhouses I do use a layer of gravel. And that is to make sure that excess moisture doesn't just stay in the container, it goes down into the gravel and then it can evaporate through the holes along the bottom. This is to prevent too much moisture buildup for my spinies. Because they are so susceptible to infections and mold, I am very, you're better off under spraying than over spraying these guys. They, they can be very sensitive to moisture. In fact, they have a kind of a joke Along, among a lot of the keepers that I know that they suffer from uh, spontaneous spiny death syndrome where you can be doing everything right and your nymphs will just up and die. Most likely it's due to humidity. It's so hard to determine exact humidity unless you have hydrometer in your tank. I always recommend it, but when you have so many, it's really difficult to get a hydrometer for every single terrarium. I've been doing much better with mine now that I've been drilling the ventilation holes along the bottom. I haven't had any losses in a long time. And so just keep them dry. That's really, really the gist of it. They need to be dry. They need to be kind of warm. Aside from that, they'll eat anything. Uh, you, I feed mine dubias, I feed mine mealworms, I feed mine cut up superworms, I've offered cut up uh, hornworms. That's really gross. I don't suggest it, disgusting, but I've done it. Uh, mosquitoes, fruit flies, because they're so small, they will continue to eat high day fruit flies, even as adults. They have to eat a lot of them, but in a pinch you can feed them smaller prey like that. They will take it. I have offered my, I don't do crickets anymore, but when I was first, first getting into mantises, I did offer pinhead crickets. I feed wax worms, I feed wax moths. They'll eat anything. You do wanna give them some variety in their diet. I've seen some 
I don't know, I don't know any official reports, but in general, variety in animal diets can be very good for them. I try to give them many different things. Sometimes I'll give them wax worms. I try not to give them too many because they're so fatty, but I try to give them something different every time I feed them, whether that be I give them a different kind of fruit fly or I give them micro meal worms when they're small. It's difficult to do with smaller mantises, but or when, when they're like nymphs, but as they get older, variety is really good for these guys and they'll take anything. They are fearless when it comes to food. If they don't take food, they're probably about to molt. And I think that's really the only reason they won't eat because these guys love their food. I'm gonna go ahead and put her back now that she seems to be done drinking water off of me. Um, it was very sweet. She's cleaning herself now. So I'm gonna put her back real quick. There we go. They also don't fly as much as, uh, even the males don't fly very much as some of the other species that I've had. I'm gonna go ahead and get out one of the babies to show you. Uh, these guys are L2 nymphs. They actually just molted. In fact, my unboxing video I filmed like two days ago, and they were L1s. Now they are L2s, all of them. They molted at the same time, all very successfully. You're definitely not going to be able to see this guy on camera, but I'm going to do my best to show you. Uh, there, see how small, see how tiny. They are very small as babies. Um, if you want to see these guys better, I did some close-up shots in my unboxing video of these. I'll put a link. Ooh, that was my shoulder. I don't know if you heard that pop. Uh, I will put a link somewhere in the video, however YouTube works. Even as nymphs, I find these guys are uh, pretty easy to handle. I am used to handling very tiny, 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 tiny nymphs because I also do boxers. And let me tell you, if you have not seen a tiny nymph, boxers are like smaller than a grain of rice. It's terrifying. So I have no trouble handling them when they're this small. And I find that spinies aren't particularly jumpy, as some other species are as young nymphs. They're more prone to just climbing and, and running instead of trying to jump off of you. But if you are uncomfortable handling them the small, there's no reason to. You, you don't have to handle them if you aren't ready for it. And if you aren't ready for it, I generally suggest not handling them. If you get startled, it's pretty easy to accidentally crush them because they're so tiny. But as a general rule for spinies, I find that they're pretty handleable. Um, I have only been bitten by one once, like, badly and it was because she was drinking water off my hand. Uh, she didn't break the skin, but I didn't have a red mark for a little while. So it didn't hurt terribly, it was whatever. I've never been pinched by a spiny. They're aggressive towards food, but never towards me, which is great. They have great little personalities. They're gorgeous. They come in, uh, as far as I can tell, three primary colors. You'll see yellow, which is the most common from what I can tell by finding pictures online. There are orange, which just means that the eye spot on their back is orange. Uh, let me see she is. So Ruby here is yellow. So you can see her eye spot is yellow. Uh, I have had orange ones and they also supposedly come in pink. And you know me, I love my some pink. My tablet that I'm recording is pink. The lids of my townhouses are pink. Uh, not today, but my shirt in previous videos has been pink. Uh, I like pink. So I am going to be trying to aim for that coloration. We'll see. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to consistently have pink spiny flower mantises, but maybe that's just me. But I generally find that these guys are very fun to keep. I really love them. Part of it's probably just because they were my first mantis, but I adore them. My logo, um, if you've seen on my products or on my page, is my first mantis. Her name was Prawn, and uh, most of my marketing is using her as the image I should have some future marketing images coming up, but we'll worry about that later. Um, I just adore them a lot. They're, they're, they're very near and dear to my heart. I think they're fantastic pets as long as you can keep them dry, but still offer them. They, love to, they, they in particular like to drink off of surfaces. While they do get a lot of moisture from their food, they do like to drink. As you saw, she just drank a ton of water off my hand. So they are someone, they're, they're a species that you do have to be careful with with water. Instead of spraying their substrate, as much as I can avoid it, I usually spray the plastic that they that I keep them in, and this will prevent too much buildup of moisture. So that's one way to keep it. But again, I also have the extra ventilation holes near the bottom to prevent too much moisture buildup for these guys. Once you get the hang of it, uh, maintaining humidity in small containers, it's not so bad. You get you get used to it. But just keep that in mind if you do get spinies that bacterial infection. In, Whew. bacterial infections and um, 
molds are really, really bad for them. That is the one thing that you really have to watch out for. If you're really worried about it, underspraying is better than overspraying. I love them a lot. This is Spiny Flower Mantis for you. They're stunning, they're personable, and they're very cute. They're very cute as babies. Um, they look like little ants. They're so small. So that's it. That's spiny flower mantis. That's that's it. That's they're really not that difficult. On a difficulty scale, I would say two stars, but maybe up to three. I would say three. If I had to say that like a ghost mantis was one star, these guys are probably three. Sorry, three stars. Am I still doing this? I don't even know. Um, but there you go. Spiny flower mantises. You guys have been asking for it and I have brought it to you and I should have babies coming up relatively soon. So keep an eye out. I will post an announcement on Facebook and do I have a Twitter on Twitter? I forget what social media I have. Instagram, definitely. Um, and I'll probably post a video also when I have them hatched just so I can show some cute pictures of them. So keep an eye out if you really want a spiny. I should have some soon. If not, if you want one right now, like the day this video comes out, uh, February 23rd. Actually, no, that's the day I'm filming. My bad. <laughs> now you know what day I'm filming. February 23rd. Uh, Bugs and Sp Cyber Space currently has some spinies, so check there. Um, Bugs and Cyber Space is great. Manted Kingdom sometimes has spinies, also great. And uh, you can also check sometimes in Discord or Facebook groups, there's a lot of sales going on through those, so keep an eye out on those. Spinies are usually pretty well available, even throughout the year, so they're not as hard to get as orchids, for instance. And you should definitely get them. You should get lots of them. You won't regret it. I genuinely don't know what my next video is going to be, so it's a mystery for both of us. I will uh, see you in the next one, maybe in a different shirt, but I'm not positive. Thank you.